So now where did you get your strong connection to God? Because you went from literally feeling like the church doesn't love me. I don't know God. And now looking at you speak, you are so confident in the power. Because of God you. did for me what he did for Saul when he was on the road of Damascus. Explain that to those who don't know. Who don't know this is even Paul said, I was taught by Jesus himself. So Paul was a person that was murdering Christians. Murdering Christians. Like, was gun-ho on murder, not just. And so, and Paul was somebody that was strong on the law. Mm-hmm. Paul wasn't somebody, he wasn't a, a murderer. He wasn't, a, he was, he believed what he was doing, God wanted him to do. Okay. He could not really understand mm-hmm. the prophecies. As smart as he was with the law. Yeah. And so when Jesus came, because the, the, the Pharisees, which we have modern days, the ones that <laughs> shake your head going into the church, the modern day Pharisees, I call them. But Paul is expecting the Savior to come in glory. Mm-hmm. He expected the Savior to come in a different way. In a different way. Came. And and but that's not what the word of God. That's not what the 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 prophecies has prophesied. Mm-hmm. That's not what they said. And so, so when God decided to take Saul to Paul, transform his life, mm-hmm. he had to teach Paul himself because of the work he had for him. Okay. He could not, he had to be retrained. He had to be retaught in a way that only God can do it. And that's what God did for me. I didn't go to a whole bunch of Bible studies to understand the word of God. I just asked God to show me. So how did that happen? Where where were you when I you asked God to show you? I was in prison pregnant with my daughter. And I cried out pregnant in prison. What is it like being pregnant in prison? You are the worst of the worst. And when I said that, I mean, because when you're pregnant in prison, they treat you like the worst of the worst. I'm telling you, you are like, oh, look at you. That don't make sense. Don't make sense. Like the inmates or the staff? The staff. The staff. The in- everybody. everybody okay. Know? Okay. And um, I was pregnant with my daughter, and this was almost 19 years ago. It was 19 years ago, as a matter of fact. No, it was 19, it'd be 19 years ago in March. And... um. I was pregnant and I tried everything else sincerely and I, before I tried to take my life because I knew that this time I had to go back to trying to kill myself because yet again, I'm having another child removed from my care. Mm. And um, I cried out to God. From the moment I cried out to God 19 years ago, almost 19 years ago, mm-hmm. I never had another desire to use drugs, alcohol, or even smoke a cigarette. He wow. instantly delivered me. He fully delivered you from the desire for something that you were a addicted to for 19 years and you said you cried out to God well, how did you what do you mean by you cried out to God because you said that you didn't really understand it God prayer. it was I, I said God I don't know if you listen to people like me but if you do please help me it was as simple as that look at that people sometimes make it seem like you need this you know in-depth oh my prayer to connect with God you just said help me God help me and that's what I mean by Paul yes see I got to my point where I was the woman with the issue of blood. Mm. And those for those of you that don't know, Jesus was out preaching as he did. And there was this woman that had an issue of blood for 12 years. When you say issue of blood, explain it, what, what issue it, of blood means nonstop. She kept bleeding to the point where and, and, and you gotta understand how. In Jerusalem and in Israel in those days, you are cast out because of this defect. Mm -hmm. So because when a woman was bleeding, she couldn't lay with her husband. She couldn't go to the temple. She couldn't do anything. Now, this woman had an issue of blood. Like, they, she couldn't. She was... She was cast out just as I was because of my issues, right? Mm -hmm. And just like her, I knew, I always knew there was a God. If only I could just get to him. Because you felt like he didn't listen to people like you? If only I could get to him. 
But you didn't know how to get to him. No, but I knew if I did. And how I got to him was as simple as calling his name. But you had faith the whole time that if you could just get, get to, to him, him, you would be just saved. Just like that woment. I saved it. <clears throat> I was made whole instantly just as she was. Wow. That is so powerful. He's the same God. Yes. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Yes. He never changes. Yeah. So the reason why I know what knew that there was a God, because he already demonstrated it in, in, in different ways. So let me give you a couple couple things that happened to me while I lived on the streets that God showed up. Okay. So I used to rip people off. Surprise, right? No. <laughs> Not surprise. Like, you were like, really? You're, you were cracking and rip people off? Kind of come, come with the terms. Right, right, like, right. It's right. <laughs> <laughs> There's a class That's you have to true. take when you're cracking to rip people off. <laughs> I pass with flying colors. But um, so I used to rip people off. And I never remember who I ripped off. And when I say rip people off, I mean, you know, the pocketbooks and, and also like these guys will come and say, hey, let me give you this amount of money and you go buy the crack and come back with the drugs and then we're going to have sex and smoke. Well, um, oh, wow. no, <laughs> I'm going to go get the drugs and I ain't going to come back. Right. <laughs> so, so I used to do that a lot because, you know, they would be like scared to go get the drugs. Of course. They don't want to be seen. I'm right. Like, All right. I got you. I got you. Okay. So one night I was out tricking. For those of you that don't know what tricking is, I was out prostituting. So I was out. And the guy, you know, in this white van pulls up and it's like, it's always a white van, isn't it? Like, That's super sketchy. That? <laughs> like, not when you're cracking. It's not sketchy. It's like, perfect. This is perfect. Oh, my God. Well, I guess you're right. That would be, that would be perfect. <laughs> white van, okay. Um, so I'm out, right? And so this guy pulls up and he said, you working? And I was like, yeah, yeah. And I jump in the van, right? So he takes me to this wooded area, and we start to walk down this path. And it's dead of night. And w the further we get back in the past, he's path on the path, he starts talking to me. He was like, you remember me? And I was like, no. He said, you don't remember ripping me and my cousin off? And I said, no. And I knew what's coming. So he, he ripped me over and over again. He beat me. And he started to strangle me. And in the midst of the strangulation, I passed out somewhere in it. And when I opened up my eyes, he was straddled over me with a boulder. Are you Ready to crush my skull. And God opened up my eyes in time enough for me to say one thing. I said, Jesus. Mm. And he fell back off of me like a wind pushed him off of me. Picked me up took me back to the van. He said, I don't have any money, but take my watch. What? Like he was in a trance. Yes. What? And even though I went back to the streets, that's my stuff all. I always tell people this. Wow. God was always with me. He knew one day I would cry out to him mm -hmm. and I would and I will proclaim 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 his powers and his his goodness. But I was out prostituting that night. I wasn't on the corners praising God, telling people, give your life to Christ. Mm -hmm. So I would trick it. And, I, and from that moment, I always knew that there was a God. And that he cared about you. And he cared about me. And I knew the power of the name of Jesus. Yes. And another way he, I was, I knew, I used to shoot drugs in 1989. And... I used to have track marks all over my body from shooting. And I used to have, I used to shoot up my hands and be black from shooting in my veins. Mm -hmm. But I used to shoot up with people that I knew had AIDS, full blown AIDS. Really? They would take the needle out their arms, draw the drugs up. And so they were literally like pushing HIV into my body. Yes. Jesus always kept me from catching it because wow. he knew one day he'll give me a daughter that I will raise healthy and I need to be healthy to do his work. God, they so will good. take will hit their blood still in the height, mm -hmm. pull up the drugs and put it in my vein. 
You were perfect. There was no way to to not catch it. Right. That's literally how you That's how you get, catch it. Yes. Yes. And Jesus right there. Wow. Protecting you all Protecting. this time and using you for his glory. Using you for his glory. So you had your baby in prison. I had my baby. Or I you didn't a, have a baby. Well, I got out I got out of prison to go to a program, another God thing. Won't have time for that. Maybe a second part, two part two. Well, I do want to. I do want you to tell us about that. Okay. Because you you cried out to God. I cried out to God while you were pregnant because while of the I was fact pregnant. that you wanted to make sure you kept your baby. I right. Want, I wanted to keep my baby. I didn't know how. I didn't know what. You know. So I had to go. So there was a program that I had to go to. Mm -hmm. But you had to be eligible for parole. Okay. I was one of my charges was violation of parole. <laughs> Okay. And God made that happen. Look at God. He made that happen. Uh -huh. And I, I go to this program and it works on my trauma, my addiction, my mental health. But it was more so a place for me to continue my relationship with God. It wasn't a Christian program. But what they said was, if you have a faith, they encourage. But so from the moment I got up off that concrete floor and mm -hmm. the, my prison cell, I felt different. I started going to all the Bible studies. I started to, to just... Read the word of God. And what what I really started to understand, understand who Jesus, the reason Jesus was, came, a reason why Jesus took on flesh. Explain. You know, I, I, I started to understand that, I started to understand grace and where grace came, came from. Grace is something we can't earn, we cannot buy, we don't deserve. Grace was God coming in the flesh to take on the responsibility of sin and take it to the cross to be crucified sin and conquer death. So we can call him father. So we can have relation. So he can forgive our sins. And so when I understood who Jesus was, Jesus was the sacrificial lamb of God. Yes. This is when everything changed for me. If there's nothing I can do to earn God's love, I ain't the smartest cookie in a bunch. But what I realized was there's that must mean there's nothing I can do to stop it. That's right. And when I took on that, my whole life changed. Immediately. Immediately. I was saving souls in, in the cells. I was like, come on, come on, let's talk about Jesus. All you got to do is, is believe. Yes. Do you believe? Yes. I was doing that before I even left prison. That's so wonderful. I got baptized because I knew what baptism represented. Right. While I was pregnant in prison. Wow. Look at that. And I went to the program and God just, my life just spiraled. Something that was so beautiful that I heard you say was that even you being in that program, you were the only person in that program that was actually incarcerated. Yeah. That program yeah. wasn't for. That was a God thing. Like, so because I w couldn't be eligible for parole, mm -hmm. they they allowed me to go as an inmate. Incredible. It's insane. Incredible. So what happened was every day during count time, the prison would call and say, is Tonya Kane still there? They say, yes, yeah, she's still here. Or they put her on the phone so we can hear her. I get on the phone to add me into the count. And because I was the ward of the state, mm -hmm. I was an inmate, and I was pregnant, every week they had to come get me, take me to prison to get my OBGYN checkup because I couldn't go to the doctor oh. because I was a ward of the state. But let me tell you how God works. Let me tell you how God works. <laughs> so I get excited about my Jesus. I'm telling you. So I'm in this, I'm in this program. Everybody go out on their walks. I can't go. I'm I'm a I'm an inmate. I'm mm -hmm. still an inmate, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm in this community program, right? And I they that one Friday. Now, mind you, before I left the pro, before I left prison, they allowed me to go in front of the parole board. Okay. And the parole board was like, she can't, I can't give her parole. Of course. It <laughs> yeah, was like, yeah. She's never successful, successfully completed probation or parole. <laughs> Yeah. And she, one of her charges is violation of parole. Right. There's no way I can recommend parole for her. Of course. And that's what he said. Of course. He said, I don't know what they're going to do, but I can't give you parole. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what I did. 
I went back to myself. Now, mind you, I was going Bible study Saturday morning. Saturday morning, and and this Saturday morning, I'm going and I'm I go and I'm listening to the Bible study. They when I walk in, they gave me a pamphlet. I was so I had so much anxiety at that point because I knew I was getting close. I was eight months pregnant, mm-hmm. and I knew I was getting birth, getting close to giving birth. And I knew if I gave birth, I'll never get my daughter back. Mm-hmm. So I was anxious about that. I walked in. They gave me a pamphlet. I was still going Bible study. They gave me a pamphlet. I never looked at it. Never looked at it. I just sat down, and I'm going through the motions of Bible study. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. Writing down everything. And I'm walking back to, I'm in prison. I'm walking back to my housing. Huge housing. Now, I go into my cell. I go into the building. They open up my door. I go into my door. It's a prison. It's just a real prison. The only women's prison in Maryland. I go in. I have the bottom bump because I'm pregnant. My roommate, she works in the kitchen. She was never there because when you work in the kitchen, you are slave to the kitchen in the prison. Oh, wow. like, they work you like you are <laughs> somebody plantation. Wow. I always thought that was like a privilege to be in the, like in the kitchen. Yes, yeah, it was a privilege if you okay but working 12 hours in, right. in, in around all, yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess for some people, for me, I thought it was ridiculous. Mm-hmm. But, so I go in, I take this pamphlet, I never look at, I put it on my roommate top bunk just to sit it there because I'm, I have so much, so because when the door shut, I'm like, oh my God, here we go. I'm not, I'm not hearing anything. So I stand there and I look out the little window out into the like the 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 room where the officer up in a bubble, and I'm just looking out there. Mm-hmm. And I have so much anxiety at this point. And I'm standing like this, and the bump is behind me, and I'm just standing there, and I, I'm I'm like full of anxiety, and. And all of a sudden, I felt something. And, and you know, when you feel something, my reaction was to do like this, like to mm-hmm. whatever's coming to stop it. And I did like this. God, as my witness, the pamphlet landed <laughs> in my hand. Oh, wow. <laughs> now, I can say maybe the window was open, but what window is in prison? You right. tell me. Right. You ever, you've never been to a prison cell. It, when, you ain't know. got no for real windows, right? So ain't no wind. <laughs> not that kind of wind. Not that kind. Not the type of wind. <laughs> and when I did like this, the pamphlet, and when I I pulled it around, and on the front of the pamphlet it said, "Be still." Wow. Not long after that, I heard Kane pack up. You going to the Tamar Children Program? Wow, that is so wonderful. And and there is when they were able to treat your trauma. Yes, but to get this. When I look, so I go to there and I'm there for two weeks and I'm, I'm a prisoner. And one Friday they called me to the office, Tony, I'm thinking it's count time. They called me down there and they said, you got a phone call. And I get on the phone. I say, hello. And they say, hello, Tanira, this is, I forgot who it was. Uh, you are now officially on parole. I never went back and took front the parole board. Get this. They sent my papers. Everybody signed off on my parole papers okay. the same day. Get this. My classification officer, okay. the warden, mm-hmm. and the commissioner. The commissioner is downtown and in Baltimore, Maryland. Mm-hmm. Your file sits on his desk for six oh, yeah. weeks. Mm-hmm. Everybody signed off on it the same day. It was like somebody wow. went from this person and went, that person got in the car and yep. went downtown. That's what happened. Because angels work. For you. And guess what? The next day, Mm -hmm. I go into labor and was able to have my daughter in a regular hospital bed and not the prison ward. Wow. What a miracle. That is a miracle. To God, all of the glory. All of the glory. Everything that I needed, I was able to get from this program. I had someone to help me to understand parenthood. You know, helping me to form a secure attachment with my child. I didn't know how to be a mother. You know, I know how to give birth to a baby. And then she said, it's time to work on your children. No. I said, no. How do you heal from something that's still going on? Okay, my mother didn't love me as a child. She didn't show me love. Okay, 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 that happened. That was then. 
I was raped, I was hurt, I was beat, I was raped, I was hurt, I was beat. Okay, that's happening no more. But my children are still living, they're still walking this earth somewhere and I know nothing about them. How do you heal from that? And she said, you do, but not by yourself. So I had to talk about my daughter when she was only 10 days old and when they came and they, they took her away from me and they put me in jail. And what, the way that my son looked when they grabbed him and he was crying, mommy, don't let them take me. I had to remember that. I have to remember my son. Now, one thing that I talk about a lot on my channel, I discuss femininity, womanhood, just learning how to care for yourself as a woman. One thing I am very adamant about talking about is the Lord and how no matter what you try to change, no real change will ever happen without Christ, without Jesus in your life. Mm -hmm. Hearing from you, I think will be powerful because it's important to be able to see yourself in someone else. And all, all of us have had different issues. We don't rank them as being more traumatic than the other. Mm -hmm. right. But you, you being in a situation where you've experienced this level of trauma mm -hmm. Where does a person start? If if there's a woman out there who has been raped or who is pregnant right now from a rape or who has had trauma from the the state or anywhere, really, where do they start when it comes to the healing process? Everything starts with the word and ends with the word, you know? And I, what I suggest is prayer and just read the word of God, ask God to help you to understand it. Find a Bible study if you could. That's a teaching, uh, a, a Bible teaching church. Mm -hmm. I'm a one hour power type person. I <laughs> went to a church the other night. It, we were there for six hours. That uh, what? Okay, well that's normal in some places. Like I'm from Ghana, West Africa. Church is like eight hours. No joke. But here it's that's that's why y'all get delivered the way y'all do. <laughs> You're right. That's why, that's We're not why. leaving until the demon comes out. That's why. That's why y'all get. That's why the people live in the villages over there, and even they don't have them, they're the happiest people in the world. That's, right. that's why. We over here. We are different. We got internet. You know. So I'm like. Mm -hmm. I need one hour of power. Like, <laughs> I, I love the Lord. Mm -hmm. But so my thing is be careful who you're learning the word from. It's so important. I learned the word from Jesus, Same. from the Holy Spirit. Same with me. I suggest people because it is so much mess out here. Mm -hmm. God he says, knock and the door will be open. Ask it and it will be given. Mm -hmm. I think that churches are good for networking and finding your, you know, your your people to keep you shopping on, shopping's on, keep you uplifted. And But your relationship with God is your relationship with God. And it should begin with God. Absolutely. That's, that's I don't so believe that people relationship should begin in the churches with God. I believe it should begin with with God, and if you don't know the Word of God, it's so many translation, so many translation to understand the Bible. Now you can go, and now, and not now, but and in addition to that, it's it's a different revelation when you have the Holy Spirit inside exactly. of you. He will teach you. The Bible will not be the same. The Holy, you know what I tell people? Because I, I I work out a lot. I do a lot because I'm real big on wellness after trauma, mm -hmm. and um. I tell people, look, think about exercise. Like over when you exercise constantly, mm -hmm. your body can't do anything but change. <laughs> right. When you're reading the word of God, you can't do anything but change and grow. The Holy Spirit will not allow you to stay the same. And over time, and it's a journey. I'm gonna I tell people all the time, give yourself a break because they all they think they need to come and sanctify and holify and mm -hmm. all of that. Mm -hmm. I tell people I left the altar and I was still a hoe. I had to go through different processes of being delivered from different things. And I think that we we get 
so caught up in with the the Pharisees to say, well, you got to do this, 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 or this, or you're not, you know, you're not a Christian. Mm -hmm. You are a Christian. If you profess that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, you believe that He was crucified for your sins, that you're a sinner, He was crucified for your sins, and you invite Him into your heart as your Lord and Savior, and you believe He was resurrected and sits at the right hand of the Father on your behalf. The Word of God says you are saved. That's right. That's it. That's it. And if anybody out there teaching you, shame on their soul. Mm -hmm. And so I think that we need to start getting real as women. So I have a, a show. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called, you know, Hats Off. Okay. And it's exactly that. Uh -huh. It's time to take the big hats off and get real. Right. Because it is important when you are in Christ to be able to have a, a, a church, a, a pastor that, you know, is Bible teaching right, right, and right. can direct you and lead you because it is important to it gather. It's important to, for us to get real with what's going on. Yes. Let's talk about how we really, meant the husbands get on your nerves. Let's talk about mm -hmm. how awful the kids are mm -hmm. sometimes. Ain't nobody keep, don't keep putting the pictures up on your kids talking about my sweet child and, you know, dog on way he terrorizing the whole neighborhood. That's right. You know what I mean? City talking like, talking, getting real. My child terrorizing the neighborhood and I'm scared. And it's important. We're not talking about that. Yeah. And now we've seen a whole bunch of kids killing their parents and a whole bunch of parents killing their kids. Because we, as as members of the church, we're not talking about masturbation. We're not talking about... Thank about, you. We're not talking about porn. We're not... Thank you. I, was, Thank I you. went from one to next to next. I went from being a hoe to the to the porn to the masturbation. Mm -hmm. I, I had to cry out to God in every single area of my life. And I still need to be delivered in a lot of areas of my life. And we need to stop hiding behind these hats and acting like everything is everything is so... Thank you. Glorified. We need to get real. <laughs> this is something I've been talking a lot about, a lot about, because I'm tired of it. Right. I'm tired I'm of tired it. Of it. And people, <laughs> come on now, we're not getting better. Yeah. I do have one last question for you. Being as though you've gone through all of these different things, how did you learn to forgive all of the people who have hurt you? Through Jesus. You know, I got a lot of things I had to be forgiven for. I got ten dollars. I got six dollars and four kids. What's up? What's up? I'm getting out of here. And you know what? None of all the world. But you know what? I would tend to be the, the best mama. I was, the way. I was never, the, I was never the best mama in the wild world. I did my kids wrong. They got took from me. It's a bullshit. This is my son. Come here, come here, baby. This is my younger son. His name is Monterey. I like him good. How y'all doing? I ain't never did anything for him. Come here. Yeah, she did. She gave me life. No, no, no. I said, I love you, baby. I love you, too. Look, look at him. Ain't he handsome? Black man. <laughs> Believe me. I love you, baby. I love you, too. I love you. I love you. Stop, Stop it. Stop Stop it. Stop Stop it. Stop Stop it. Yeah. Look. And that's her door. Yeah. It's cold out here. She ain't talking to me. Huh? This is my coat. I know. Okay, Shannon, put it on. Put it on. Anyway. Put it on. <laughs> Stop it. Shut up. No, I ain't. Shut no, the now you want me to shut up? You didn't just come down and just come down. I know. <laughs> there you go. Here. Did there the camera go. get that? <laughs> Caught up. Bye. 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 You can't stay this. You know what? I don't like you, but I love him. But that too small. I'll tell you what. Walter the red shop. I don't like you, but I love him. Because he's a smart. You ready to go home? Good night and happy Thanksgiving to you. And you have a nice, nice life. Bye, baby. I love y'all. I love y'all. It doesn't be okay. I love her too. The warm. Oh, oh, oh. 
We've known each other for five years, back when I first met Tony, when she was at the Women's House of Correction in Jessup, and she was pregnant out to here. She now, as of yesterday, officially has become the team leader for the newly funded National Center for Trauma-Informed Care, which we could be happy with. just a, a joy to be with, and when you hear her story, I think you're going to be absolutely as moved as I am every time I hear her as well. So for that, my friend, Tony Arcane. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm so thrilled to be here in New York City. I'm down at the Maryland Correctional Institution for Women for violation of parole, and I'm pregnant, and I'm terrified that I'm about to lose another <coughs> child. And I remember running around and, and telling people about my fears. I don't want to lose my baby again. And I'm a happy baby. And they were telling me about this program called Tamar's Children. Well, they said, you know, it works on your trauma. I said, well, I don't know what that is, but I know I got it. And, then, and it works on your addiction. I said, well, that's a given. Your mental health, yep, I'm crazy. You recover and you keep your baby with you. Perfect program for me, right? I was keeping my baby. And the first thing that someone said to me when I got to this program, the first session I had, my therapist told me, everything that happened to you as a child happened to you, you didn't do to yourself. And I believed her. And we started to work. See, because you good folks, you know, some abuse, some, even some judges, even parole and probation, Try to help me, try to give me some, some tools on how to live. But you know, the good information was only surface. It couldn't get where it needed to get for me to, to get it rooted so I can build a foundation and grow, grow from. So my belief system can change from I am nothing to I am somebody and I can be anything I want in this world. You so have to get it out of me to get the good information down there where it needed to be. My therapist, her first task was to allow, help me to feel safe. Because without feeling safe, there was no healing for me. Everything that I needed, I was able to get from this program. I had someone to help me to understand parenthood. You know, helping me to form a secure attachment with my child. I didn't know how to be a mother. You know, I know how to give birth to a baby. And then she said, it's time to work on your children. No. I said, no. How do you heal from something that's still going on? OK, my mother didn't love me as a child. She didn't show me love. She, OK, 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 that happened. That was then. I was raped. I was hurt. I was beat. I was raped. I was hurt. I was beat. OK, that's happening no more. But my children are still living. They're still walking this earth somewhere, and I know nothing about them. How do you heal from that? And she said, you do, but not by yourself. So I had to talk about my daughter when she was only 10 days old. And when they came and they, they took her away from me and they put me in jail. And what, the way that my son looked when they grabbed him and he was crying, Mommy, don't let them take me. I had to remember that I have to remember my son being picked up for the weekend and never brought back. Uh, he forgave me for it. And, you know, forgiveness has nothing to do with letting a person off the hook. You know that. Mm -hmm. the forgiveness is letting yourself off the hook. Mm -hmm. You know, I, this side is good. Mm -hmm. And I don't want anybody holding me hostage. I don't want to hold myself hostage from what's on this side. And so... Forgiveness comes from my relationship with Jesus. I, I really truly believe that people only can truly forgive, freely forgive, 
with, because of their relationship with Christ Jesus. Because when you understand all that God got to forgive you for, <laughs> yes, and you have no right to hold somebody else accountable when you won't want God not to hold you accountable, mm -hmm. it's easy to forgive. I forgive. I, That's wonderful. You know, and I live in this joy from that, this peace from that, yes. you know? And God will take care of everything else. You don't it have to will. worry about getting everyone back. And if they're going to get theirs, hey, the man, Lord. David was, David was crucial. He was like, God, I want you to go. I want you to string up the whole family. Yep. David was like, look, yep. go and, and crucify the gender, their sons, their sons, and their sons. David was like, <laughs> David was like kill them all. The Lord will work on your behalf. He, His right. enemies, your he enemies are his enemies. His. It, vengeance belongs to the Lord. Where she's being loved, where I own my own home, she's been given the opportunity to go to a private school where she'll get the best education. You know, she's being hugged all the time and, and told that she's loved and worthwhile. She will never know what it's like to be hungry or to wait for somebody to be able to get money to feed her. Treating my trauma totally broke that intergeneration curse. I'm told that she's conditioned by her environment. She adjusts to, to what she's learned. And if that's the case, then she will be able to give her children what she was given. You know, so that curse has been broken. And we begin to look at a different cycle and our generation path from here on out. Well, tell us just where to find you and what you're doing now, because you're now training facilities and governments mm -hmm. on trauma and not re-traumatizing people who have already been traumatized due to all the trauma you went through being in the system and in places that were supposed to protect you. Mm -hmm. So your advocacy is such an inspiration. Your whole story, your whole life is such well, an inspiration. You. Well, yeah. Tell so us where to find you. It. So I have worked in every state in our country, including Alaska and Hawaii, training providers on how... So, like you said, not to re-traumatize, how to understand the impact of trauma and what it takes to get better. Mm -hmm. um, that's my training company, um, Tanir King International. I'm a publisher. I have a publishing house, um, um, the, T Tenere, um, the TCI Publishing House. Um, Purpose Entertainment is my production company. I have two television shows in the film in production. Wow. Um, I'm an author. Uh, my latest book is Relationship After Trauma. It talks about how to. It's a guidebook to help you to to um, to obtain and maintain healthy relationships after trauma, and you work through it with a journal. Uh, I have a skincare line, um, and I just your skin is beautiful. And and you know, I in two, two, 2020, I figure if you have a skincare line, you might as well open up stores, right? Yeah. And so it's like so, I um, yeah, I just everything that I do. Everything that I do comes back to who God is mm -hmm. and what God can do. Amen. And um, so, yeah, I um, and so I have I a nonprofit. We provide free services for trauma survivors wow. in the world. I'm known in 60 countries for my work. I have days named after me by governors and mayors. And and 18 years ago, they told me I'll never get better, that I was mentally ill um, and that there was no hope for me. But there is hope in Christ Jesus. There is hope. There is hope. Thank you so much. Like, thank you so much for being here and for sharing your story. Well, thank you, for having you are me. so beautiful. You are such an inspiration. And I know that this is going to bless so many people well, when they you. hear your story. Thank you for having me. Of course. And thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Hey, you guys, it's Shan here. I'm at Venice Beach with Fine Forever. And we are getting people to check out the Silent Storm perfume. You know what? I want to check it out first. Let's see. Let's see how this is. Ooh, it smells so good. I'm so excited. I think people are going to love it. Let's go check it out. Oh, that's really good. I like that. It's yeah. kind of like flowery. I like that. Yeah? yeah. Like, do you think daytime, nighttime? Yeah, um, definitely nighttime, I think. Nighttime? Where would you yeah. wear it to? Like a date night, something like Ooh, that. Yeah. Date night. <laughs> okay, cool. I like the oiled part of it. You know, perfumes usually be clumpy, but this is kind of oily. It's not loud, but it's, you can smell it. You can wear it to work because you know, some offices don't overpower and I work around people. So yeah. it, it's not overpowering, but it's really nice to be like, oh, she smells good. And it's not Dove soap or, you know, but it smells good. I'm yeah. honest. I, it's yeah. smells good. Oh, very very flowery. Very, yeah, yeah. Sweet. Flowery, sweet. I awesome. love the package. It's you a love really it? good package. What's yeah. the nine minutes? Ooh. 
Silent Storm. Oh, wow. I like it. Where would Where you, you wear it? Um, I'd say date night. Date night. But I also think, like, to work, like, during the normal day. Yeah. <laughs> Did you like one? Oh, yes, sure. Ooh, thank, thank you. you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you so much, y'all. Have I a great day. Put All it right. on my <laughs> hey. Hey.